Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today we are going to talk about burning time, what it is and how it relates to speed. Without further ado, let's get into it. Before getting into the video, I just want to remind you that there is a timestamp in the video description below, so if you want to jump right away to some section of your preference, you're free to do so. With this out of the way, let's keep on going. If you own or you've been working uh, with uh, laser engravers from Nege, so you've been using their software, you're most probably aware about burning time. Now, burning time is this proprietary parameter that was introduced by Nege in their software, which enables you to control the carving effect. In particular, if you crank up the value of the burning time, you increase the carving effect, getting deeper into the material and eventually also cutting through the material, while on the opposite direction, so going down with the burning time, you are basically uh, re reducing the carving effect. Now, if you're starting out with laser engraving and this is the only software that you've been working with, uh, you are most probably not questioning yourself about burning time. However, as you go along uh, in this hobby or career and you start, for example, using other softwares, uh, including uh, Laser GRBL or Lightburn, which you can see here on the background, uh, you will quickly realize that the CNC world uses a parameter called feed rate or speed. And feed rate represent the speed at which the tool moves on the space. And so in our specific situation, this would correspond to the speed uh, at which the laser moves. And so um, at a certain point, you will realize that um, most of the information available on the web will refer to parameters like power and burning time. These are the two uh, most important parameters so far. And so you will start questioning yourself on what is burning time how does it relate to speed and how can I convert from one another? And so that's what I'm going to uh, reply in this video. Now, I set out a goal and that was to kind of reverse engineer uh, the algorithm or the process calculation that Nege uses behind the scene to actually uh, engrave and to come up with a formula that can uh, let you convert from one parameter to another. So I started to perform uh, several different tests. In all of them, I basically used a simple line and I engraved it a different uh, power settings, burning times, and so on. And timing it, I've been trying to figure out what's the speed. And so, as you can see here, I've set up this chart, okay? This is one part of the chart. Okay, I have some, some parties now uh, hidden. And so, as you can see here, um, I basically come up with some numbers and I've been trying several different tests in the chart and I basically came up with these two formulas. Now, in all of the testing that I've been carry, uh, carrying out, I've noticed uh, some things that are very important if you are willing to continue to use this software. And so the first one is the reason why oftentimes when you import an image file is getting scaled, that means stretched or shrunk by some factor by the software. And so this has to do with the idea of uh, fixed pixel dimension. So uh, Nege uses uh, a pixel which they call dot and this dot has a fixed dimension. And this dimension is actually given by uh, the DPI of their machines, which are rated at 339 DPI. And so if you do the math, um, so you basically take an inch and you divide it by 339, you end up with a value of 0 0.075 millimeter. So this is the dimension of one dot, or in other words, one pixel within their uh, software. And so this is something very important to keep in mind when designing something that is meant to be uh, imported into the software. Because 
uh, if you design anything and you export in any other value different than uh, 339 dpi's you basically have for example uh, you see I have designed this line this line has a length of 100 millimeter okay we don't care about the thickness for this uh, demonstration and so if I export this line at 100 dpi which is fairly enough for computer screens um, so what the software is doing is a simple mathematical calculation so it's one inch divided 100 and this will give you a pixel dimension of 0 0.254 millimeters and so th then it's basically taking the length of your design divided that pixel dimension and you end up with the pixel count in this specific direction so this is our width in this case but what happened with that is that a pixel uh, here has a dimension of 0 0.254 millimeter when you import the line which I've already exported there you go 100 millimeter 100 dpi open that up okay okay and okay so the line in the canvas end up being a fraction of that length and so this has to do with the actual translation from the pixel value in for example Inkscape to the pixel value now in dim dimension in uh, the software of Najat and so I will now demonstrate this with the line exported at 339 dpi which is the dpi of the machine and so when I finish with the wizard so I end up with 100.13 millimeter which is pretty close to what was my uh, original dimension and so this is something to keep in mind so I suggest you to uh, export your designs at this at 339 uh, dpi in order to don't have any scaling problem afterward and so this was the first um, thing that I uncovered uh, with the software the software basically evaluates the number of dots and not the length and so what happened here is that whatever dimension it have it end up being in your canvas okay see this I called stretch length or canvas length okay that's basically divided by the size of their dot which is 0 0.075 and this one will give you the number of dots and so these are the dots and so at that point I realized that perhaps what they mean by uh, burning time so say for example here 18 millisecond is that it's going to take 18 millisecond to pass a distance of one dot which is again 0.075 millimeter and so what happened is I said okay so in this case let me try to estimate the time so the number of dot times the burning time and I'm ending up with a value now I'll tell this value uh, ended up being not the correct one as you can see this is the actual elapsed time and this is the estimated value the estimated value it's lower than the actual time so at that point I started to question myself what is happening in the reminder of the time so I did the simple arithmetical difference here and this was the reminder of the time for all of those tests so what is happening and so I tried to basically come up with some solution and then I started to think that perhaps this instead of being actually the inverse of the speed as I was initially uh, thinking this might be representing the time that the machine takes to engrave one dot or to be more precise the time the machine stays at one dot and so I kind of tried to picture that out for you here in Inkscape so say for example each one of those rectangle squares actually represent the dot in Inkscape and so say for example our burning time is 10 milliseconds that means that uh, the laser is going to stay 10 milliseconds in this 
dot or pixel then it's going to the next and again it's taking 10 milliseconds then it's going to the next and again it's taking to uh, 10 milliseconds and this goes on and so at that point summing this up was giving me a value a time value which is lower than the actual value and so if you think now there should be some movement from dot to dot and so I call them jump and so there will be some extra time spent at a certain speed here in reality there will be a motion curve with acceleration constant p speed and deceleration and so there will be a, some extra time spent in between the dots so what happened here is I basically took the difference of the time that I had from the estimated value which is given by the burning time to the actual value and I divided it by the number of skips and the number of skips is actually uh, very simple is the number of dots minus one and so I ended up as you can see here a part one mistake that I saw here most probably it's a mistake from the calculations um, basically I ended up with averaging this many the average 233.5 skips uh, or dots per second okay and so translated in uh, uh, speed will be uh, 17.5 uh, millimeter per second and so the most important uh, value at that point let me just give an extra uh, there we go and so we basically end up having a time of uh, this is the skipping time actually it's supposed to be in seconds only and so we basically have 0 0.0043 seconds which are used to jump from one dot to another and so at that point you will see here again in Inkscape I came up with two simple formulas one is the reverse of the other one you can see it over here and so the speed that is uh, going to be in millimeter per seconds so you can easily then convert that into inches per second or inches per minute they are given by the dot pitch so the dimension of the dot which as you can see here is 0 0.075 divided the burning time which is what you set uh, in the application however this should be in second so you can divide the burning time by a thousand plus the jumping time which is 0 0.0043 second and so this is going to give you the speed uh, on the opposite side if you want to go from speed to burning time that's gonna be the again the dot pitch which is the same minus the speed in millimeter per second whatever that happened to be times the jumping time again it's 0 0.0043 divided the speed and that's basically going to give you the um, solution to the problem something that many people are trying to uh, understand and so back to the excel spreadsheet basically created this simple calculator so now we know that for instance at 20 uh, millisecond the speed is going to be 185 millimeter per minute or if we want say 1200 uh, millimeter per minute the burning time is and now this is the second thing that I uh, understood by making this test and this is that the machine cannot go faster than 850 about 850 millimeter per minute okay now with this I cannot say whether this is a bad thing also because the machine uses uh, as a different principle as we understood there is this basically pausing dot by dot but definitely this is a limitation okay however and this is the uh, part that it's going to be left for a follow-up video um, all what I explained here it's perfectly valid only for uh, raster images so that means for files that you import by clicking on load image and so all of this PNG JPEG GIF and so on they are going to work out in this way okay and uh, the value that I found they are uh, referring to uh, the motor speed set to medium 
Um, I didn't come up with a value here. I wasn't particularly interested. But when you basically switch to slow, faster, very fast, this is basically changing the skipping uh, uh, speed and so the skipping time. So that's going to be the 0 0.0043 uh, second is going to be either lower or uh, higher than that. Okay. Now, when you load the G-code instead, so that's a .nc file and a .dxf file, the things are different and I will basically remove the filters here so you can see them. I have performed some tests with DXF, DXF13 in particular, this is an autocode file, and the G-code, it's a .nc file, which you know works with your Nege desktop application. And so here again, I didn't find a linear relationship. I tried to input several value for similar for the same burning time, but using different length uh, into a system of equation. Uh, then I tried with a matrix. I couldn't really come up with an actual number, an actual number for the two variables. But definitely what I can say by looking at them, if I select them both only, is that as you can see here from, for example, 10 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds for the same distance, okay? You can see here that something is wrong. So you are basically uh, doubling the burning time, but the time is only 2 seconds, 2.2 seconds more. Uh, this is the triple, as you can see. It's not farther from the other one. So here definitely they are using some other concept. I also tried to figure out whether or not they are using uh, the GRBL uh, chipset, which is in the board, uh, but that's not the case. And the way I understood it is using the uh, offline button on the back of the machine. So when you use the offline button, um, it, it should basically uh, engrave the latest project that was launched by the NG application and so uh, it was engraving the actual G-code file. So that means that the G-code is also handled by the Nege proprietary chipset. So this is not the case. So for this, uh, I will uh, continue to do some testing and I will try to come up with some number. Eventually I will be able to give you a nice clean formula like uh, the previous one. Uh, now, the thing that I've noticed instead uh, playing around with uh, G-code and DXF is that the length, the design length, it's actually respected into the canvas and we can do that test very quickly. Let's load the G-code. Let's start with the NC file. So let's get this test line. I wrote this one by hand. It's a very simple G-code. And so let's give it OK. And as you can see, this is 100.05 millimeters. So it's very close, but if you do the calculation and you account for, again, for the dot uh, dimension of the application, which is, again, 0 0.075, uh, you end up... So basically, the dot dimension is like an integer for the application, and so this 100.05 is a multiple of that uh, dot. Uh, similar, if I get the DXF file, uh, that's the other test line, so open that up. All right, all right, and you can see that I'm ending up with the exact same thing. For the time being, I hope you enjoyed the video, you found it helpful. If you have any comment, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you next time. Ciao for now.